So having come back up north and been blown away by the house uh, uh, and having sort of a lot of ideas about what the arts and crafts would require, like required of this design, um, but possibly what the house was saying differently in terms of it being quite simple and not pretty decorative. So I came with this list of um, of of, uh, of things that it should definitely do. So things like it should uh, rely on knowledge of materials. It shouldn't use too. Uh, it shouldn't use computers in a in a in a, a sort of guiding way. I really love this idea of. James Krenov's uh, leave, leave your fingerprints on the finished work uh, as evidence of, of how it was made. Um, I really liked um, picking up on some of the Gothic elements of Red House, so, so tall arches um, and pointy tops and things like that. Um, and there was this, this thing that seemed really important, which was that it was going to be sitting in a fireplace and Red House was actually a very spare space and the, the fireplaces were interestingly the places where the richness exists in, in Red House, the fireplaces and the other brickwork on the outside. So with this design sitting in a fireplace, um, that was sort of, became, it became clear that that was going to be one of the key points of the design, that it was going to be either charred in some way or the iron was going to be used to colour it black in some way. So what I remember of this was that you came back from Red House and I think you were a little bit surprised that it wasn't like rich and full of and full of kind of crafted right. stuff in the way that we kind of I suppose the stereotype of William Morris is. You know, he's sort of celebrated for being this person who was kind of obsessed well, with craftsmanship. Floral wallpaper was what he's isn't right. Exactly, that's nice. kind of a stereotype. So, so you were surprised that when you got in there, actually a lot of the um, interior spaces are quite plain. And the the richness that there is, it's 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 mostly in the brickwork, especially the external brickwork, but and especially the fireplaces, and so um, which are brickwork. That's where the brickwork which, leaks into the inside. Exactly right. And this is going to go in a fireplace, so it's got to have something to do with that. You were looking for something that one. I think we both felt that it was really important that um, William Morris and the Arts and Crafts were referenced in some way. And we had quite a long discussion about well, it in was, what way. The brief was quite keen for us. It, it was quite clever in the way that it was written in, in, in that it asked us to, to embody the ethos of the arts and crafts, which is a much more interesting brief than to... Right, because you, you were saying, well, actually, you know, because William Morris is sort of famous for sort of um, be, uh, wanting to kind of go back to a pre-industrial age and use and, and, and kind of... Um, uh, celebrate craftsmen that use the sort of tools that were around before that. Um, but you said, well, actually, machines and the machines you use do take a great deal of skill to use. And if it was the skill that he wanted to, that he was that he was um, interested in, then actually, you think he might have come around to the fact that it was they were skillful um, bits of things to use. But also, it's the the the, the arts and crafts uh, at its heart is about uh, the, the craftsmen engaging with their materials and so there are many ways of engaging with materials uh, with materials not not only with hand tools although that is a preeminent way of engaging with materials because there's no there's no way of skirting the issues that come up with them the conclusion of that discussion was that the piece needed to show that the maker really understood the material right yeah the piece was about engagement with materials. Right. And I would, with wood, so it was going to be wood. Yeah. But there was this thing that it was, it was, it was called, the project was called a new range for Red House because it was replacing this cast iron range. And this idea of iron, of a stove, of, of, of this fire, within a fireplace was such a delicious sort of mm. conceptual indicator that it, 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 was, it was where we ended up ruminating around. Right, exactly. So you've got this richness coming from the different bits of the Red House that are kind of, you know, the, this kind of decorative brickwork and um, and also this idea of it being, um, having something to do with the fireplace and the range and cooking or burning stove. And we were 
bassing about kind of the idea of maybe ebonizing the timber. So yeah, like ebonizing. So when you use vig- vinegar with uh, iron filings to enact with the tannins in the oak to basically turn it jet black. So it turns um, it black. Yeah. But so, there's also a stove in there. So we're thinking, well, the other way of turning wood black is to is to char it. So there's the stove that used to be there. It's a fireplace anyway. We're putting wood into it. Yeah. Charred wood. And then and then so then um, there's a favourite quote of ours by Gustav Mayer. Right. And he says, tradition is tending the flame, not worshipping the ashes. And that is such a great one, it's an amazing quote because it really kind of it sort of it kind of summed up our thoughts of about William Morris. That Absolutely. He, that, you know, that he wasn't a, a Luddite or a slave to yeah. tradition and that tradition's actually a moving and a moving and uh, thing but also the that um it is quite literally the ashes because it's in a stove it's in a fireplace right. well also i mean i think you can literally just take out tr- tradition and replace it with the arts and crafts the arts is a, uh, the arts and craft is about tending the flame it's not about worship, worshiping right, exactly so splicing that idea of tending the flame with what we understood to be important about red house and this place where which this piece was going to sit um, uh, gave us this feeling that it's had to be something to do with burning and I think it was Howard who said let's not char the wood let's burn the piece right and I think the other thing is just with this because we dug out this old design sheet right um, this is the one this is this is where the idea this is was where, basically battered out yeah this is where Howard wrote down all the things that I had brought back and thought were important and then this is where we started to write down these kind of things. Tradition is tending the flame. Fireplaces and chimney are where the richness is. Yeah, and, and, and fuel is significant. We've written that. There's this feature of Red House, which is like, it looks like a chimney from the outside, but it's not a chimney. It's actually a window. And it's got this quite distinctive corbelled brickwork. It's and actually, the thing, the thing, interestingly though, the brickwork on it looks relatively simple on, yeah. from the front, but actually... Behind these clefts is, is a beautiful um, a coved piece of bespoke brickwork, which yeah, just yeah. seems it's, to say everything really, about the Red House that, that you really... And it's it's know. kind of... I think that's my favourite bit of the Red it's House. It's pretty iconic. And so, and so we basically sh- put that form... Because the thing is, none of, this, none of this discussion is dictating a form, and that's the important thing, because you need... A, you can have as many ideas as you want, but one of them's got to lead to something that's actually a form or it's got to drive the, the actual nature of the design. So um, so we, we tried that bit that we really loved in there and how would that be made of wood and how, because it is like a burner shape, it's like a kind of cauldron or a kind of, um, uh, kind of burn basket type yeah. thing, isn't it? So, so basically then it developed from there and there was ideas about kind of like, well, how, what shape would it be? If we're going to, if we're going to make this thing that we're going to set alight, how, what shape would it have to be for it to kind of spread about the fireplace in an interesting way? And like, could we burn it in the fireplace or? There was a really you know. interesting part of this discussion that, that, that came up quite quickly though, which was the idea of if we're going to be burning it, then we mm-hmm. had to include redundancy, as in we had to oversize some of the timbers in order that they be burned away and not compromise the structure integrity. And that's where this motif that happens all across the piece um, uh, came about, which is basically the idea of widening the timber when you come to parts which are going to be burned. So when you look at the piece, the bits that are widened are the bits yeah. that are going to be exposed to this fire. So the bits that are going to get the most flame and the, they get chunked up. And the thing so that's super important safe. about that is that this is arts and crafts ethos. This is understanding the material, understanding the process yeah. and and engaging with it in such a way that it's evident on the finished piece. Right, exactly, yeah. 